Today we are touring the construction of a new high-end space at Golden One Center. It's called the Row One Club. Hi, I'm Mika Records with DPR Construction. I am a pre-construction manager for this project, the Row One Club. We're here at Golden One Center and we have been involved in this project for about three months. We went through six to eight weeks of design and then into a fast track permitting process and then right into construction. Where did this project inspiration come from? I was meeting with Ryan Bryce, who's head of marketing for the Sacramento Kings, and he had found all of these old images from starting in 1919 of the Rochester Royals and Eber Seagrams, which were the original team back in Rochester, New York. And there was one photo that's the inspiration for the entire club. So uh, 1919, 1920, um, the prevalent design style and architecture. The newest one was sort of this was Art Deco. And so I started researching Art Deco, Art Modern in Sacramento to see what was going on with that style here. And that was the inspiration was to create a visual architectural design link to the past without being really blatant and being really subtle and doing it in a really elegant way. Can you tell us a little more about some of the key features and materials used in the space? This one, for example, is um, it's a black marble with an inlaid uh, brass design. This was one of the first um, elements I chose for the space, um, sort of as an inspiration for other uh, surfaces and things throughout the club. So you'll see everywhere, you'll see a lot of marble, brass inlay in the floor, the walls um, on the front of the bar area and the bay as well. Um, we also are doing this really beautiful wall covering um, throughout the club on a lot of the columns and pilasters and things, which will you know accent everything I say is black and brown. We are here in DPR's job site office, and behind you are some very colorful renderings. Can you tell us more about these? I want to say that this is the, probably the most creative, fun part of a, a designer or architect's job is creating these deliverables. You know, years ago, this was all hand sketched, and there was only so much you could communicate with a hand drawing. With the creation and the development of the software tools, we're actually able to build consensus on a job, create design, solve problems by creating these kinds of deliverables. What are your key measurements of a project success? For us, you know, it's ex extremely important to bring a project delivery on budget, to have great aesthetics, and to have a happy client. What are your key measurements of a project success? Yeah, I don't know if it's just one thing, but it's a combination of all things. You know, we're building an environment here that means a tremendous amount to us. So the success of it's predicated on the fact that everybody that lives in this house came together, came up with an idea, brought it to life. And at the end of the day, it's these recurring experiences that we have within the club that really is a measure of success. People come in, they see it, they feel it, they experience it, they're able to enjoy it, they tell their friends about it. And uh, they're always able to point back and say, you know, what an amazing thing that we were able to deliver. And that really is a measure of success. This is a fast track project that we have here for SSG, which is a special services group that we provide over here at DPR. And this job is about three months long, so around 14 weeks plus or minus. We have a very, very hard date that we cannot miss here at this job. No matter what, we have to make our end date, no matter what happens. Jacob, can you lead us on a tour of the job site? Tell things on the job site, your number one is always safety, right? Regardless of what you're doing out here or how fast or anything needs to be done, you're always your number one priority of safety because we all want to go home to our families at the end of the day, as well as all of our trade partners. We want our trade partners to go home in either the same condition or better. That's my biggest thing on a job site, regardless of how fast they need to go. It doesn't matter if I'm working weekends, Saturdays, Sundays, 10, 12 hour days, safety is always our number one and will always be regardless of other things that are important on a job site are logistics and schedule. 
your schedule drives everything, right? So without having a good schedule, you may not be uh, able to build everything the way you need to build it. So you have to really look into the details of how it needs to be built. And lastly, but not least, but all intertwines together is planning and coordination with your subcontractors, ownership, and for this place in your existing facility. If you don't do all that together, you're not gonna be able to do this. You have to have a band of group out there that are willing to work with you and willing to put this place together. Like today, for example, I had tapers, I had drywallers, I had carpenters, um, I had electricians, I had insulators, I had job walks and I had meetings all happening within a, in less than 4,000 square feet. And it all worked out perfectly. Because why? We all got together in the morning, we all talked about where everyone needed to do their job, and we all worked together throughout the day to make it work. If you don't talk about it, you don't plan for it, it's not going to be able to happen, especially with a fast-paced schedule like this one. Steve, can you tell us a little bit about the mechanical, plumbing, and electrical systems? So right now I'm standing in the Pass the House lounge area. Um, as you can see, it's a very, very high area. It's around 30 to 32 feet high. Typically, a uh, Florida deck is around 14 to 15 feet. So a lot of items you have to worry about here. Um, we have to move existing utilities. We see existing firm bins and how big they are that we have to work around. Again, this is a build out of a remodel uh, existing building. So it's items that we, we cannot move or, or it's very cost prohibitive to move in order to build out their new space. So you have up above large storm drains, large stuff work going all the way across. There's some uh, red conduit going across the fire of all wires. Um, again, just a lot of utilities you have to think about when you're building out a new space. How long have you been in construction? Been in construction now, say uh, six years, give or take. What's your advice for someone in high school wanting to be a superintendent? You have many paths. There's not always one path. You may only think there's one, but for example, there's a couple. You can either become a human trades person from anywhere from a laborer to a carpenter to, to be honest, anything. Every, every tradesman has a superintendent that runs their scope of work. If you want to do something like me for a general contractor, typically you could become a carpenter and work your way up and roll into a superintendent in your career. Um, or there's another option that you can go to school. You can get a degree in uh, construction management. There's many different places out there that offer that degree or programs to be able to give you that avenue to become something like me. What is your advice for someone in high school that wants to be an architect? Well, hopefully uh, what's happening today is happening when I uh, got uh, interested in architecture. In, in, in high school, they used to offer it as an elective. And I would strongly recommend that you get your first taste of it by, by uh, you know, um, enrolling in that class. If that's not available um, in college, I do know there are design courses. Take one, see what you, how you feel about it. I, I have to say RMW has a, a pretty um, good track record with taking interns and we're, we're very active in our community. and. Uh, during uh, all you know, economic downturns, uh, positive uh, economies, we've always been involved with getting interns, so give me a call. And what would an intern do at RMW, a summer intern? We actually throw interns right into the fire. We, we um, you know, there was a bad, a, a bad stigma with interns in the past where they would get shoved into the library and just, you know, package things. Okay. We actually, expose our interns to every facet of the job. We take them to meetings, we get them exposure to working drawings, assuming they studied in school and learned Revit or AutoCAD, we, we actually put them to work. What is your advice for someone who wants to pursue a career in facility management? What we're seeing in the industry is people coming at it from different angles. You have to have an operational background, you have to have an operational understanding of security and guest services and food and beverage and engineering and housekeeping and all these elements that live, you know, inside of a building like this that are all required to engage one another and ultimately deliver an experience. So I would first start with your education, find a formalized program that's specific to this industry. I would also try to get a job in this industry and start somewhere because then you begin to really have these experiences. It doesn't matter whether you're in housekeeping or engineering or uh, security or volunteering or whether you're um, you know, an intern, get in, get involved, be seen, be heard. That's the best way to start really kind of carving away at what you want to do.